Okay, so for this week's episode of Tiger and Bunny season two, I decided to do something a little different. I'm going to do a review instead of doing a live reaction because there was a lot to unpack in this episode. And now I can understand when people were talking about when all the first 12 episodes came out and they it's like, you know, episode 12. I'm like, ooh. So I can just assume episode 12 is that callback to the first seven or so minutes of episode one and how everything led up to that until we can get the second half later this year, hopefully, from Netflix, okay? So um, the episode at first, I thought it was going to be, you know, focusing on Mr. Black and I am Thomas, you know, just because previous episodes we had, aside from episode seven, we had it where it was focusing on all the buddy duos from Lightning Kid and Magical Kitty to, to Origami Cyclone and Bison and so forth. And this episode kind of did in the beginning, but slowly it started to focus more on Thomas, right? So with episode eight of uh, Tiger and Bunny season two, it starts off where, of course, there is, it, it's it's like a daily occurrence in Sternville. Someone is robbing somewhere, whether a bank, a house, whatever, someone is robbing, right? And they corner the robber in a dead end alleyway, right? To stop him. And we have where Mr. Black is like, okay, just put down your gun. Um, you won't get hurt, just just give up, okay? Just turn yourself in. And at first, dude, the robber drops his gun and it's like, I'm not gonna hurt anybody, just, just don't hurt me or anything. That's when Mr. Black kind of like, because he thinks the robber has willfully given up and you know, he's about to turn himself in. And this is where I am Thomas comes in to see what's happening. The robber quickly switches up takes his gun and shoots of course it doesn't hit, hit both of them but it does hit one of the standbyers i don't know like y'all see a crime going on and all y'all want to be seeing the crime not knowing that or better yet they do know you're you're putting yourself in harm's way one of the um standbyers a woman she gets shot in her in her thigh right and thomas sees that and then instantly a trigger goes off in his head, a memory. And it's a little girl, a little girl who's injured and she's crying and she's saying it's her. And then he instantly goes to the robber using his telekinesis and then starts pummeling him. And then they had to change the channel, put on commercials and everything because they couldn't put it on air, but it was too late. It was on air. And then I find it very hypocritical of a lot of, you know, the people, the citizens in Stern Bill, because they go saying, I don't want him near my children. I don't want, um, I am Thomas, or I don't feel safe around with him, you know, go beating up people. And I find it so hypocritical because you have robbers who was willing to shoot after you. They will take things that are your possession and kill you if needed to be there are people there are criminals out there who harm citizens on a daily basis and they don't care of the consequences or anything of that sort but the minute a hero does the same thing to the villain to the criminal because every action we take you know and this is real life stuff too every action we take has a consequence whether it be a good consequence or a bad consequence heck bad consequences could happen to good people right and then yet people are so quick to say he was wrong i don't feel safe with him but you got people shooting guns at you you got j the joker running around murdering people and traumatizing people and yet a hero does even vaguely one third of what they're doing and seemingly you guys are not safe around them like to me i find that so mind-boggling and sometimes that's why i'm like if i was ever i i pictured myself like in these situations like suppose i was in a setting like tiger and bunny or, or one punch man or my hero i couldn't be a hero because you guys are asking for help and I help you and these people are actually harming you. They don't care that they're harming you. And the minute I show a little violence 
these people have no these these criminals and villains have no problem showing violence mind you i don't feel safe okay so protect yourself don't ask for help don't be calling my name don't be asking where the heroes at protect yourself but anywho you know the 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 crowd citizens are making uh making noise and some headlines even though they're false and there's no credit to it are saying that thomas is fired come to find out like thomas is since he's been first introduced with his partner um uh mr black they never were able to see eye to eye but mr black was able to see what type of person thomas is i forgot his name mind you it, it's been a minute since i last heard his name so um because they don't show up that much little commentary and all of that but anywho he kind of knows his routines he he does study his partner despite them always you know butting heads mind you they're the probably the second youngest in the entire organization in Sternville for all the heroes because they're like what 17 18 years old so he realizes that you know all of this may be weighing on his head and at first you would think due to his sodic personality, he was some rich kid. Come to find out that is not the case. Um, with Thomas, he lost his parents at a young age, okay? He has a younger sister. They both lost their parents at uh, ages seven to nine. They lost their parents due to uh, a car incident. So they were put into an orphanage and they only had each other to rely on. Of course, many families came in looking to adopt these kids, but none of them wanted to adopt Thomas due to him being a next person. And again, that goes into the discrimination against people who have powers, who are next people. And I guess they feel inferior to them. They, they probably feel scared that they may use their powers and turn on them. So they were quicker to want to adopt his younger sister versus him and he didn't want to be separated from his only family member and that you know that's reasonable because these are two scared kids they lost both of their parents at a relatively young age so they don't want to be separated with each other right so there came a time where the head of the orphanage was like no we just have to send your sister to another family so they run away to the slums and then you have creepy people trying to pick on them and trying to rob his little sister of the necklace which is a memoir from their deceased mother and he's protecting his sister using his powers but as they're trying to get away you hear a gunshot now this ties into the beginning of the episode where when he saw the lady got shot in her thigh his little sister in the flashback got shot in her leg they come to say that she can't really use her leg anymore because that gunshot must have wounded her leg so badly that she can't even imagine she's a little kid she's seven years old and they beat him up because he used his powers to protect his sister again these people must feel inferior to next people so there must be um I shouldn't always compare but think of like along the lines of my hero where probably 20 percent of the nation is probably next users and is continuously growing while still the large at mass is normal people with no powers they're just normals walking around so um that happened and that caused him not to trust because he did trust the basically the head of the orphanage but he wanted to separate the two Okay, eventually she does get adopted and he's left at the orphanage. Now, the scariest thing about this episode is the twins. The villain twins are now in Sternville with their boss, right? And while Thomas is in a museum and he's looking at, you know, all these historical people, particularly heroes and villains, and there came across a... Uh, old time i would say vigilante turned villain one of the strongest next users in their history where at first due to him being so powerful he couldn't become a hero so he became a vigilante that's a no-no in hero society you cannot be a vigilante hey so he basically went against the strongest hero and the twins were there. They adore this villain slash vigilante because he basically just used his power and didn't care what nobody else was saying. He did what he needed to do. And they met with Thomas. And I know for a fact they know that Thomas is I am Thomas. So that part had me 
the most scared because Thomas doesn't know he's about to face the people that are about to come after his life. And they leave an airy message telling Thomas, oh, we don't know what would have happened if you didn't say you didn't like this particular vigilante, meaning they would have attacked him if he said another answer. Mind you, these guys are kind of, um, you know, they're not the brightest light bulbs in the box, you know, in the box, but these guys, uh, yeah. So they're in Sternville right now. They're in Sternville. They're hang out in the hotel with their boss and everything, just watching everything unfold. And Thomas met them. He was the first one to meet them. So after he leaves the museum, he meets an elderly couple and they're, you know, the husband is like having some medical problems and they're like, they don't have anyone that can drive. So he willingly drives them back to their house and they have a meal and they're just, you know, hey, how you doing? You just look kind of upset and we just wanted to bring you here to cheer you up. And you're thinking, yeah, Thomas is, you know, he's lightening up. Of course, he's someone that can't trust people, but these two elderly people are telling him, you know, there are people out there that you can trust. There are people out there willing to give you a hand, you know, whenever you need help, whenever you, you're feeling down, right? And he's like, yeah, he's feeling good. Well, a touching moment was like they were having lasagna and that was something he hasn't been able to eat for about eight years, ever since he was in the orphanage with his sister, okay? They, they... <laughs> It's been a rough time for Thomas. So you kind of feel bad and you understand why he acts the way he acts now. So while he's staying out over at the elderly people's place and about to go to sleep, he sees, you know, on the TV, all the heroes are working together. Of course, there was some incident that happened, a robbery and all of that stuff. And they're leaving a message for him because throughout the episode, they're trying to show that, hey, we're here for you, but we don't need to say it in words. We'll show it through our actions. And whenever Thomas is feeling stressed, he has a stress ball to relieve his stress because he doesn't verbally say much. So he uses it to calm himself down. So they were showing a stress ball and they were sending his message and he was feeling good. Two tools, as soon as he's about to get up, he falls down. He was drugged, right? The elderly couple is actually a criminal duo, okay? what One of their next powers is they will steal the fingerprints off of who they're robbing, then make it look like, oh, it was actually the person who did it. It was their fault. So what they were gonna do was the house wasn't even their own. They stole it from the couple that was living there, okay? And made it seem like it was their own and tricked Thomas into, you know, giving him, you know, poison food. And I was like, how everything just like it went to a whole 180 this kid is starting to trust people trust people and then he got portrayed in the same night and then he's like i'm glad you guys just told me basically made me firmly believe that i can't trust nobody he beats the hell out of these two and then walks out and says, I will never trust anyone ever again. And it doesn't end just there, okay? We see as the twin villains and their boss are in their hotel room and looking who they're going to attack first of the 12 heroes in Sternville while the heroes are at a bank because they had to go rescue people in there. There must have been another robbery or something. All you hear is a big boom. And then you see Barnaby just flying out of the building injured. Mind you, the twins are in a hotel. So you're wondering who the heck is powerful enough to knock Barnaby through a roof, okay? Making Kotetsu start screaming for his name. Something is telling to me, in all honesty, that it may be Thomas. It may be Thomas because the person who he used to look up to, one of the vigilante slash villain guys back in the day, 10 years prior, his thing was all about believe in only your own strength. And right now, Thomas has been betrayed. He can't trust nobody. 
he gives his trust and people turn their backs on him they use him and disregard him he doesn't even know where his younger sister is ever since she's been taken from the orphanage and adopted into another family and this guy is practically alone okay and his partner can't get through to him so i don't want to say that it is thomas but the way thomas was starting to move within the last seven to ten minutes of the episode after the whole ordeal with the elderly criminal couple the the elderly villain couple something is telling me he's about to turn sides i could be wrong because his powers does look like it's going haywire it, it looks way stronger than they used to be before okay something is telling me thomas may betray the hero heroes and that will give leeway to the Ouroboros twins. I could be wrong, but the way they set up those last few minutes, that may be it. So, um, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> These last three episodes are go going to, um, I'm going to check out once I do the live reactions will probably tell us what's going to happen and then after that we'll just have to wait for the second half of Tiger and Bunny season two to drop out most likely later this year probably around either fall or winter season and I can't wait honestly because now things are starting to uh thicken the plot is thickening and I I really feel scared at this point for Thomas and for the rest of the heroes and with you know Ouroboros twins now in Sternville about to cause complete mayhem so guys do tell me in the comments if you saw Tiger and Bunny episode season two episode eight what do you think about this episode if there were things I did not mention in this video please do drop a comment about it what are your thoughts of what's going to happen um with Thomas and with the other heroes and then with the Ouroboros twins please do tell me the links are in the description box so you guys can go check that out and i'm kimmy chan of anime legends and i will see you guys later bye